Karl Erwin Hobb, the younger brother of German billionaire Karl Erwin Hobb, presumed dead after going missing on a ski trip, will take over the sole leadership of the family's Tangleman retail group, the company said this week. Christian Hobb and his brother, who belong to one of Germany's wealthiest families, had been co-CEOs since 2000. The 150-year-old group owns a number of chains, including the Kick low-cost clothing stores and OB home improvement outlets. Karl Erwin Hobb vanished during a ski outing in the Swiss Alps on April 7, and family members said last week they had given up hope of finding the 58-year-old alive despite a huge multinational search effort. The loss of our brother is a tragedy for our family, but it does not endanger the continued existence of our family business, Christian Hobb. 53, said in a statement. Our common goal was always to pass on a strong company to the next generation. I plan to stick to that goal and will do my utmost to achieve it. According to Swiss media, Karl Erwin was last seen taking the ski lift at the Klein Matterhorn on April 7 at around 8.30 a.m. and setting off at an altitude of 3,800 meters on the glacier-covered mountain, the highest in Europe reachable by cable car. He was training for the Patrol des Glaciers, a grueling race across the Alps organized every two years by the Swiss Army. He had participated twice in the competition that combined skiing and climbing. But rescuers believe he had an accident during his solo practice run. Mr. Hobbs' disappearance came just a month after the death of his father Erevin Carl Matthias Hobb, 85, who ran the company from 1969 to 2000. The Tengelman Group employs around 80,000 people worldwide. It said its revenues for the financial year of 2016 reached 9 billion euros, 11 billion dollars. Its success has lifted the family into 265th place on Forbes magazine's Global Rich List, and 20th place in Germany. U.S. billionaire Matthew Mellon died this week in London. Scott Barber, Getty Images Matthew Mellon billionaire banking heir Matthew Mellon died this week at the age of 54. His cousin Peter Stefich confirmed Mr. Mellon's death but declined to provide any details. He had struggled with drug addiction, and reports said he died at a rehabilitation center in Cancun, Mexico. Mr. Mellon comes from the Mellon and Drexel families of Bank of New York Mellon and Drexel Burnham Lambert. According to Mr. Mellon's LinkedIn account and documents of the Securities and Exchange Commission, he attended the Wharton School and later worked in fashion, telecommunications and finance, most recently as an advisor for the digital currency company Ripple Labs. Mr. Mellon is survived by his first wife, fashion designer Tamara, his second wife, fashion designer Nicole Hanley, and three children. Testifying at a trial where Mr. Mellon was acquitted of hiring a private detective to snoop into Tamara Mellon's finances, the co-founder of Jimmy Choo Shoe said she and her husband had met at a meeting of Narcotics Anonymous when both were recovering from addiction. The two married in 1999 at Blenheim Palace, one of England's grandest homes, with friends Elizabeth Hurley and actor Hugh Grant, among the guests. They divorced, several years later. Chief Executive of Amazon, Jeff Bezos. Jason Redmond, AFP Jeff Bezos Amazon.com Chief Executive Jeff Bezos said the e-commerce giant has exceeded 100 million paid Prime subscribers and will continue to invest to meet ever-rising customer expectations. Mr. Bezos noted the milestone in his annual shareholder letter, published Wednesday. The letter is the founder's opportunity to underline his long-term strategy for investors, seeking to bolster their confidence as he continues to plow Amazon's money into expanding internationally, building a brick-and-mortar presence, and inventing new products like Echo Speakers and the Alexa Voice-activated Digital Assistant. Prime subscribers pay monthly or annual fees in exchange for quick delivery of online orders, music and video streaming and free online photo storage. The memberships encourage consumers to shop more with Amazon to get their money's worth, similar to warehouse clubs like Costco Wholesale. Amazon took its memberships a step further with additional digital perks and sells add-ons like a more robust music catalog for an additional monthly fee. Amazon has kept its Prime subscriber number a closely held secret, forcing analysts to estimate the figure based on shopper surveys. Mr. Bezos' comments show that Seattle-based company is selling Prime memberships overseas, demonstrating it can replicate its use success abroad, says RJ Hadavi, an analyst at Morningstar. Amazon is losing money with its international expansion, but investors will be patient if the company is gaining Prime subscribers, he said. What we're seeing in Europe and other markets is similar to what we saw in the U.S. between 2010 and 2014. Mr. Hadavi said, people see value in Prime memberships in terms of shipping speed and content. It's important to investors because membership retention rates are north of 90%.
Mr. Bezos said that, in 2017 Amazon shipped more than 5 billion items with Prime worldwide and more new members joined Prime than in any previous year. He added that 2017 was best year for hardware sales and that the company will continue to invest aggressively to expand its customer base, brand and infrastructure. Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates Anna McKay, Reuters Bill Gates When it comes to making an impact on the future of medicine, billionaire philanthropist Bill Gates is looking to new vaccine technology and research on the bacteria that inhabit your gut. Vaccines that use a mirror image of DNA to halt the growth of bacteria and viruses appear capable of speeding development of the prevention tools dramatically, Mr. Gates said. The vaccines, based on a genetic messenger called mRNA, are under development by companies including Moderna Therapeutics and Decaravac GmbH. Even if a new pandemic broke out of something you'd never seen before, you might be able to get a new vaccine developed in months, as opposed to years, he said on the sidelines of a meeting on malaria in London. Rapid advances are also taking place in the study of the microbiome, the bacteria and other microorganisms that live in the human digestive tract, helping researchers explore the cause of malnutrition, said Mr. Gates, the co-founder of Microsoft. More than 100 startups are looking at the field, leading to lots of insights for many different diseases, he said. Investors ranging from venture capitalists, seventure partners and flagship pioneering to pharma giants Bristol-Myers Squibb and Johnson. The foundation, the world's largest private charity, provided $4.6 billion in 2016 grant support and focuses on areas such as HIV, malaria and tuberculosis, according to its website. Hedge fund manager Steve Cohen Photo, Bloomberg Steve Cohen Hedge fund manager Steve Cohen is bringing his passion for tech startups to Asia, along with his checkbook. Point 72 Ventures, which invests mostly the billionaire's money in early-stage companies, is starting to evaluate prospects on the continent after putting millions of dollars into startups in the Americas and Europe. Asia presents a chance to swing big because it's unburdened by technological infrastructure, particularly in financial services, said Matthew Grenade, who oversees investments at the venture capital arm of Cohen's Point 72 Asset Management. Many parts of the developed world, such as the U.S., spent decades to build such infrastructure, making it harder for them to adapt, he said. Here, when suddenly you have a huge population moving into the middle class that was never served before and no technologies that were available to support them, you could just build from scratch and leapfrog. Pete Casella, who leads the venture capital firm's investments in financial services technologies. Mr. Grenade manages a 10-person team in the U.S., where Point72 Ventures has done most of its deals so far, along with a few in Europe and Latin America. Aja is the next frontier, he said. Acorns Grow, which offers an investing and savings app for people with limited disposable income, is one of the more than two dozen investments that Point72 Ventures has made over the past two years. Others include Hanetef, a London-based firm that helps launch exchange-traded funds, and Extend Enterprises, a New York startup that allows business card holders to securely share their credit cards with employees and freelancers. While Grenade said deal sizes range from $250,000 to $10 million, it's not just about the money for Mr. Cohen, who's worth $12.1 billion according to the Bloomberg Billionaires Index, a ranking of the world's 500 richest people. Mr. Cohen has its soft spot for those entrepreneurs with a passion to excel and shares almost a kinship with them, Mr. Grenade said. These are not huge checks we are writing, Mr. Grenade said. But Steve is involved in every one of them. He meets with almost every company we invest in. He enjoys spending time with them. Point 72 Ventures is not open to investors apart from Cohen and some eligible employees. While it is a wholly separate entity from Point72 Asset Management, the bigger investment firm can come in at a later stage of a portfolio company's life cycle and inject larger sums of money if needed, Mr. Casella said.